Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. We're talking about the covenants of God. Covenants, plural. And God is a covenant-making God. Right in the Garden of Eden, Adam sinned. Well, I thought his wife didn't. Now, oh, come on. He wasn't, off, he wasn't off tending the garden somewhere. The scripture said he was right there with her. He just stood there and listened to her and watched her do it. Mm -hmm. It was his fault, not hers. She was deceived. He was not. So right then, they were frightened and tried to cover themselves. And the Bible says they sowed fig leaves to cover themselves. And, and God brought them to himself and he clothed them with skins. So obvious. He killed an animal. The first blood shed ever was an animal of sacrifice. And this, this man had attempted to meet his own needs without God. And God entered a covenant with him. And he entered a covenant of tithing with him. Actually, the sin was over the tithe. That was God's tree. The fruit was Adam's tithe. That's right. Now, you have to know that because otherwise, uh, otherwise how would Cain and Abel know anything? No, that is good. Can you, come, you know, you come from West Texas, that fits that's, right that's, in, brother. That's right. Yes, sir. Yeah, he had to learn them something. Yes, he did. <laughs> Reckon so. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, man. <laughs> Just kind of lapsed back to my native tongue, didn't it? <laughs> okay. Well, he tried to meet his own needs without God. And God stepped in there. Have you ever thought about what it would have been like if they had said, okay? Now, she said you're not supposed to touch it. God didn't say when you touch it. He said they had to touch it. It was going to come a time to pick that fruit. But she was deceived. The devil had, was working on her mind then. Had they waited? Mm. Waited till that fruit was ripe and would have taken it to the Father and set it down before him. What would have happened? He would have taught them he would have taught them mm. good and evil mm. without wow. having to experience. My Lord, wow. that's, that's good. Wow. That's good. Jesus was taught the difference, but he never experienced it. That's good. Glory to make you shout right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, make you shout. Does me. You know, that was Jesus that came and said, where are you? Adam, where are you? Yeah. He, he knew where he was. And in the Hebrew, he doesn't really say, where are you? He says, why are you where you are? Say that again. He doesn't say, where are you? He knew where he was. But if you read it in the Hebrew, it's this. Why are you where you are? Naked. Who told you? This is the next question. Who told you that? We have people today believing, oh, I'm just, I'm just this and that, and my grandparents were this, and I'll never amount to Who told you that, that you're that case? Because I didn't tell you that. Amen. You're listening to something else. And they, they went with their own works and made those fig leaf, try to cl clothe themselves. Now, we're, we're heading up to resurrection this week. I mean, next That's week. That's right. Um, Jesus, in his last week, will speak to a fig tree and curse it. That's right. And I've always wondered, what that tree do to you? <laughs> yeah. And uh -huh. here it is. There's not going to be any more covering of sin. I'm going to do away with this thing. Praise God. And it's not going to be animal skins this time. It'll be mine. Yep. Amen. And so he's fulfilling what happened all the way back there in that last week. It well, goes, you know, it'd be this week. It goes all the way back 
to those fig leaves in that garden. That's exactly right. There's nothing that isn't connected in this book. Yes, that's absolutely right. nothing that isn't connected. If, if you've book. seen if you've seen a rose, a fully blossomed rose, and then you've seen a ro- rosebud. If you've never seen a fully blossomed rose, and you just look at a rosebud, you just, mm, yeah, that's all right. But what happens? It, it unfolds, and that's what covenant does. It started out as that rosebud, but over time, that thing has unfolded till we get to to Jesus hanging on the tree, and now oh we're walking in the fullness of a better covenant, brother yeah. couple. It's wonderful. Oh, it is we can wonderful. see it now. Yeah. They can only see it in part. Mm. But we can see it totally now. Not only can we see the full rose, we partake of its fragrance yes, yes, because yes. He is the rose of Sharon. Yeah, oh my God, yes. <laughs> Glory to <laughs> Jesus. God. That's good. <laughs> Woo! All right, Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to go on up to the 10th verse this time. For we are His workmanship created. Mm. Amen. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God. Now, now let's go back to what we found out last week when we said, who is God? He, is, he said to Abram, I am El Shaddai. El, God. Mm-hmm. The God. I am El Shaddai. Mm-hmm. Meaning, I am everything you need. I'm the God that's more than enough. Glory to God. It, you, you have to realize, God, El Shaddai, Yehovah Rapha, mm-hmm. I'm the God that healeth thee. Um, you have to remember he is who he says he is. Yes. He can do what he says he can do. He will do whatever he said he would do because if he said it, it was immediately a covenant. Yeah. This is why he watches over his word. Yeah, to perform it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, remember the time being, see, you're, you're now his workmanship, which... God, which El Shaddai, which your God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, he got this all prepared beforehand. Before the foundation of the world, he had it all laid out. Yes, he did. Your life, my life, everybody's life ever born, praise God, is in a book. Not the Lamb's book of life. We're in that one also. But the book of life. Every, every human ever planned to be born mm. is in there. It's a book of destiny. There's no mention of sickness. There's no mention of disease. There's no mention mm. of the devil. And none of that, no, none of that's in that book. But the devil comes along and does his very best to, through his <clears throat> lies to sidetrack you and keep you from getting into the Lamb's book of life. Now, once you get in there, there ain't nothing he can do about it. I mean, he's Mm. lost his deal because you stepped into another covenant. (sighs) By the blood. No longer a stranger. That's right. No longer a stranger from the covenants of promise. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. At that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, both of them, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes are far off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You've received him and that blood covenant. You're in a blood relationship with almighty God. You experience the circumcision of the heart Hallelujah. I mean, there's a cut across your spirit, man, that the devil can see it. God can see it. It's as real as Abraham's circumcision of his foot. Yes, yes, yes. And it shows every demon in hell that you're a covenant brother, covenant sister. Hallelujah. With Almighty God and with His Son, Jesus. Amen. You know, there's an example of that in the life of Paul. When, when uh, he said, the, the demons, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. Oh, yeah. But who are you? Who are you? They can't see it on this guy. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
That's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Oh, that's good, man. When Paul's doing right here in the book of Ephesians, he's, he talks about you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. And then he talks about what they used to be. He's explaining to a new generation of people of the book who they are. He's teaching them. They don't know what you were before. And he's explaining this to them. And that's what, the, what you're doing. People say, I've heard Brother Copeland preach on covenant before. This is nothing new. No, 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 no. There's a whole generation that needs to know who they are and where they came from. Yeah. It's important. And that, that's huge. You know, we're headed into that area. Yes, sir. <clears throat> right now, I'm, maybe we can get there today. I know we will tomorrow. I know we will tomorrow. <clears throat> About there being a new generation. Now then, yesterday we talked about the reasons for cutting the covenant. We talked about the method for cutting the covenant. I'm, I'm still talking from uh, and reading from uh, Dr. E.W. Kenyon's book, The Blood Covenant. Now, he said, I have left out a very important feature of this ceremony. As soon as the two young men had drunk each other's blood, well, let me back up. The method, men wish to cut the covenant. They exchange gifts. By this exchange of gifts, they indicate that all one has, uh, the other owns if necessary. Now, we read that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After the exchange of gifts, they bring a cup of wine. The priest makes an incision in the arm of one man and the blood drips into the wine. The same thing with the other uh, man's arm and drips into the same cup. The wine is stirred. The bloods are mixed. And they hand the cup then to each one and they drink of it. And now they're blood brothers. All right. And remember what's so important. This one was first. God introduced covenant, blood covenant to the world. Yes. With Abraham. Yes, he did. Yes. All right. Now, as soon as the young men had drunk each other's blood, a priest stepped out and pronounced the most awful curses that Stanley, we were talking about Stanley and mm -hmm. Livingstone. Right. Africa. Stanley was searching for Livingstone in Africa that Stanley had ever heard. Curses that were to come upon him if he broke the covenant. Stanley's interpreter took his part and pronounced curses on the old king, his wife, his children, his tribe, if they broke the covenant with Stanley. You remember when Moses appropriated the land and different tribes, he called their attention to the mountain of cursing and the mountain of blessing. People, Greg, including yours truly, I struggled with the curse of the law. <clears throat> I struggled with that. Well, nobody I, wants that. <laughs> Who would want well, that? And it says, the, the Lord said, I will. Yeah. I will do it. Yeah. I will do it. And I kept thinking, well, no, he, he's not cursing anybody. I, he, he's, he must be just allowing this. No, it's, it's written correctly. And now he never intended for them to be cursed. But this is, they're entering into covenant relationship. This is what happens if you break this covenant. It's going to happen. Let's look in Deuteronomy 28. And uh, notice, right in the very beginning words of the blessing, and you'll see what, how it's relative. It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you hearken to the voice of the mm -hmm. Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. But 
15th verse. It shall come to pass if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. All these curses will come on you and overtake you. Now, what was happening here, all you had to do <laughs> and it was get into the 27th, 27th chapter, chapter. Yep. and not start with the 28th. That's right. I get really irritated at the numbers sometimes <laughs> because God wasn't saying, now, chapter 28. I got, no. No, he just, <laughs> no. We put that in there. Yeah, we put that in there. Now, you back up over here in this 27th chapter, ninth verse, Moses and the priests and the Levites spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel. This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Today. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Now, God had entered into covenant with Abraham. These people didn't know anything about that. So now they're coming into that covenant. They're finding out about it. They're finding out how it works. And, and the, it, there's blood between us now and God, the Almighty One. Moses charged the people that set the same day saying, these shall stand upon Mount, how do you pronounce it? Gerizim? Gerizim, yes. To bless the people when you come over Jordan, Simeon and Levi and Judah, Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin. And these shall stand on Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. So you got two mountains. And you're shouting blessing, shouting cursing. And every time you shout, the people say, Amen. 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 So now this, you can see now, God didn't intend for them to be cursed. But they have to be, they have to be aware of that blood covenant. They, I mean, they, they lived without knowledge of it all of these hundreds of years. Just, Israel just been thrown away. Amen. Amen. Now you take that up from, from so here. The very name Deuteronomy, where we get the name. In, in Hebrew, Davarim is what it means. It means the words or the words of Moses. In the Greek, and there was a Greek Old Testament at the time of Jesus, yeah. Septuagint. Deuteros, right. Deuteros nomos is what it is. It means the second law. Now, he's not given a second law, a new law. This is the second reading for a generation that had never heard it. Yeah. They That's weren't right. at Mount Sinai. That's right. And so he's giving them the instruction when they go in this land. Now, what, you just said something. <sighs> That's what was going on with Moses for 40 days. Yes. He didn't even eat or drink water. He's in the very presence of the Most High God. And God is teaching him and just in panorama, he saw the creation. Saw it all. He saw it all. He saw this whole thing. For six weeks, he was in God's presence, and God entered into covenant with him, and and, and he saw the covenants of blood and, and and understood them. Yeah, he saw the hinder parts of God, his his history. So when he went by, he put his hand over him, and he saw from that moment back everything. Isn't That's how that he was able to write it. But let me, you mentioned him. Now, let me show you this in Exodus 19. Exodus 19 is the instructions uh, at Sinai the first time. And this is in Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, he, he, he said, bring the people to me. He brings them to Sinai. If there, therefore, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant. <sighs> Didn't say commandments. There's no, no commandments yet. Hadn't got them. No. Covenant. Keep my covenant. Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people of the earth that are mine. You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, 
and a holy nation. And they said, we've done that. It's kind of like when your mother says to you, go clean your room. And you say, I already did that. I, I, I did that. No, you didn't. You shoved everything under the bed and in the closet. <laughs> that's you right. didn't clean. You, and that's what they said. They're boasting. We've already done that. Brother Coburn, they hadn't walked in faith since they left Egypt. So what covenant, when he said, if you'll keep my covenant, when he said that to Moses, what covenant is God talking about? Covenant of Abraham, mm -hmm. mm. which is a covenant of faith, yeah. being justified by faith. Abraham believed God, was fully persuaded. Yes, sir. And it was counted unto him righteous. Well, they're saying, we've done that. We got that. We'll do that. He's like, you don't even, you're not, you've just shoved everything under the bed. And then he tells them, tell the people to sanctify themselves, to get their house in order. And you come up here on the mountain. And then that's when they got the law was given to them. Yeah. So in Deuteronomy, back here in Deuteronomy 27, this is a retelling. Remember, they all died in the wilderness. This is their children, grandchildren, except for Joshua and Caleb. And these are the instructions. He's rereading this for them so that they'll know what they're supposed to do when they cross Jordan. So essentially you got the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now here you had a people that didn't know it because they spent so much time in Egypt. That's right. Now here you've got a group of people that don't know it because they're too young. They're born out there in that desert. Mm -hmm. So they, they don't know anything either. So he's got to go through it all again. And that's what Paul's doing in Ephesians, telling you one time you didn't have a covenant you didn't know. So let me tell you what is yours now. So I always wondered why, wouldn't it have been awful to be on the Curse Mountain just because you were born in that tribe? <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's horrible. I don't want to be on that. And I wondered, Lord, why? And he, and he showed it to me who they were. The, the Cursing Mountain, which was the mountain to the north, because this kingdom's going to split after David north that's and south. Right. So the cursing mountain is the one to the north. Um, that's Jacob's sons with the maidservant. The blessing mountain is the promised seed mountain. That's Leah and Rachel's children are over there. And that's that promised seed. Now I've been grafted into that promised seed. Right. Abraham. God. I'm not a maidservant. I'm a, I'm a son <laughs> of the blood of Jesus. And here's another thing. And you, you read this. They said amen to the cursings. We'll accept that. They did not say amen to the blessing because the blessing is a covenant promise. They already knew that. They've walked in that because of the manna and the quail and all. They've walked in the blessing. And we're out of time. We're out of time. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.